Tell me if this sounds familiar. The second you sit down at your desk to start working, a wave of sleepiness and fatigue sets in. You've had eight hours of sleep, two cups of coffee, and a banana and strawberry smoothie. How could you possibly still feel tired? Yet here you are, fighting the urge to have another nap that will most likely turn into a two-hour snooze fest. If that sounds familiar, I'm here to tell you not to worry, because you are not alone. In addition to myself, according to a community-based epidemiological study, 15-25% to 25 of the general population suffer from mental tiredness or fatigue. In fact, half of these people suffer from chronic or long-term fatigue, which means they felt continuously tired for a period of longer than a month. There are a range of different classifications for mental fatigue, but the one I want to focus on for this video is Directed Attentional Fatigue, or DAF. DAF is a neuropsychological phenomenon that is as a result of an overuse of the brain's inhibitory mechanisms. These mechanisms allow our brain to focus on a particular task by zoning out the distractions around us. This is how you're able to focus on your friend's voice in a crowded and noisy room or read on a busy train. Our inhibitory mechanisms don't only work against external distractions, they're equally useful when it comes to internal distractions, such as focusing on a task when you've just had a disagreement with a friend or a spouse. However, if these mechanisms are overused due to extensive stimuli, then you're left with DAF, and focusing on one task becomes increasingly difficult. Directed attentional fatigue has a range of other symptoms, including restlessness, confusion, inability to plan, short-temperedness, and even antisocial feelings, just to name a few. Today, we live in an always-on world where our attention is being pulled in various directions, either explicitly through emails and smartphone notifications, or implicitly through the instant gratification offered by social media services. But the worst thing about directed attentional fatigue is that it's a vicious cycle. DAF makes it difficult to suppress irrelevant information, and as a result, our attention darts from one irrelevant stimulus to another. This in turn causes more fatigue and suddenly we find ourselves in an endless loop of distraction and mental tiredness. In other words, if you're constantly finding it hard to focus at work, then it's possible you're suffering from directed attentional fatigue. Studies on mental fatigue have shown that it can affect all facets of our life, from worse performance on basketball free throws to reduced learning rates in the classroom. This has spiraled even further with the pandemic and its disastrous effect on our baseline stress levels. In short, we are all tired all the time. It's messing with not only our ability to be productive, but ultimately, it's messing with our ability to be happy. So what can we do? Everyone will have their own recipe for how to deal with DAF, but here are five things that have worked for me. Number one, begin your day with minimal distractions. This could mean you start your day by meditating or praying. Essentially, expose yourself to as few stimuli as possible. If I have any writing or reading to do, I try to do that first thing in the morning before I even look at my email. Getting rid of distractions reduces the load on your inhibiting mechanisms, thus allowing them to recuperate for future focus tasks. Number two, take short breaks and stop early. As mentioned earlier, DAF is caused by an overuse of our inhibitory mechanisms, so it's important to give our brain a break. My strategy for taking a break depends on my energy levels. The pandemic did a good job of derailing my work routine, so initially I started by taking a five minute break every 30 minutes. But over time, I increased my work time to one hour with a 10 minute break. I also capped my working time to three to four hours a day, which is the recommended amount of time any individual should dedicate to deep work. Number three, get enough sleep. Sleep is when our inhibitory chemicals are replenished, so getting enough sleep is critical. However, just sleep on its own is not enough. Good sleep preparation habits can play a big role in how well you recover from mental fatigue. One thing I find that helps is using blue light reflective glasses. I also try to stop screen time at least an hour before bed. Also, avoid revenge sleep procrastination. I did this a lot during my PhD. I felt guilty for not getting enough work done during the day, so I postponed sleep. The thinking behind the idea was that I would feel better if I managed to get an hour of work done before bed. I was wrong, and this is generally a terrible idea. Any work I did was done with suboptimal focus and reduced attention, and this decision made me more mentally fatigued the next day, ultimately diminishing my focus even further. Number four, experience nature. One of the key aspects of attention restoration theory is the immersion in nature. Taking walks in the forest, fields, mountains, beaches as frequently as possible has shown to be helpful in restoring our ability to focus. Personally, anyone who knows me knows I love my long walks. One hypothesis for why nature is beneficial for attention restoration is that nature allows our brain to enter the default mode network, DMN, 
sometimes called wakeful resting. This wakeful resting facilitates our inhibitory chemicals to recover. Also, it's just an all-around peaceful experience. Number five is gratitude journaling. This is when you write down what you're grateful for, regardless of whether it's big or small. It sounds like something Oprah would recommend because it is something she recommended, but it also has some convincing clinical research supporting it. I must admit, I do not do this nearly enough, but the days I have done this before bed, it's drastically reduced my anxiety and allowed my mind to relax. I slept better as a result and I've been more focused the next day. Currently, I use Google Docs to take my notes, but I know many people who use Notion or simple old school notebooks to do their gratitude journaling. I wanna point out that there are some days that even these tips don't work. I guess that's just part of being human. Our minds and bodies are more connected than we realize. And for us to achieve our goals, both mind and body have to be healthy. We live in a world where we are constantly comparing ourselves, evaluating ourselves, putting pressure on ourselves. And this collective load is what ultimately stops us before we even get started. In my opinion, we have to fight the societal narrative of growth and more and better. Because if there's one thing to take away from this video, in the midst of our busy, crazy, information-heavy, social media-filled lives, is that less is in fact more.